So, Nasir bhai, welcome to New York. <laughs> <laughs> it's been raining today, so monsoon. Huh? It's very appropriate <laughs> to revisit. Just for the record, I saw you when I was 17 years old in the American in Kasturba Gandhi Marg in Zoo Story. The zoo Story. And of course, you've done. Um, I was wondering if there were any good-looking women in the audience. No, you couldn't have seen me, and I was at the, right at the back. Right at the back, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I've carried a torch for you ever since. <laughs> and uh, really, you know, I have a theory about people I admire that I will meet them and offer them and come to be a part of their lives when I have something to offer them. You know, and so it was really. Uh, important with monsoon wedding when sabrina and i were cooking it up that we for me it was ultimately really the goal was to create some a family that you could be the foundation of as lalit barba so you were the first person i only thought of and came to in, i remember it was april of the mm -hmm. year 2000 and the idea with monsoon wedding as you well know is how to make something out of nothing how to make something very cheaply inexpensively but very inventively with a great bunch of actors and non-actors to try and make a reality check on our yeah. uh, on what it really is to have a wedding. So, do you remember us coming to you and pitching? Sure. Yeah. Sure, I remember it. And I also, in fact, I remember you talking to me about it when I was here in New York right. for the very first time. Right, right, right. When I came to see you in your other office yeah. and we walked down uh, toward a cafe which allowed us to smoke. That's right. And <laughs> And we and you told me at the very for the very first time about it. Yes, yes, yes. It then is. of course, then then the whole thing started happening. Yeah. So I was more than happy to win because these kind of uh, Punjabi weddings. Yeah. In Delhi, yeah. I saw from a distance. Yeah. When I was a student there, penniless and you know with sort of cardboard and soles of my shoes. Right. And I used to see these weddings and I said, man, look at this. You know, there must be a lot of fun going yeah. on in there. Uh, I never, of course, got invited to any of them. <laughs> so it was like being transported straight yeah. into, you know, the very heart of it. Yeah. And and I'm supposed to be the patriarch. Yeah. Who, which it's funny how how one can just slip into a part, uh, which you haven't necessarily, you know, sort of gnashed your teeth about and mm -hmm. thought about for two years. Yeah. But something which just. Uh, in some way, one finds an, yeah. an empathetic angle. Yeah. And to me, it was the uh, when Lalit and his wife say to each other, "Ki ye kitni jaldi badi ho badi ho ah, yeah. That was the note which really hit me, yeah. and I said, "Wow, this this is a moment yeah. that that I would love to play." Yeah. A middle class Punjabi from Delhi was perhaps the last thing I yeah. thought that I would a be suitable for. Yeah. <laughs> and secondly, which I would ever get to play. Yeah. Because you don't have such characters yeah. in Hindi movies. Yes. People who are real. Yeah. Uh, uh, people who, you know, uh, not heroic in any way, who can laugh and cry, yeah. but who are capable of this, uh, of a strange kind of a heroism, heroism. Yeah. Which, uh, uh, which ultimately makes you feeling very proud. Yeah. I mean, in Monsoon Wedding, a big inspiration to make the film was to make it with Great actors as yourself, but also non-actors, people in the community, Shashi Aunty, the comic. <laughs> I mean, so many people. It was an ensemble film, and I was casting loads there of were people so many I knew. Newcomers. And people would drop out of the part the yeah. day before shooting. Yeah. In what happened with the Shashi Aunty, yeah, yeah. and and this woman got a TV role, and she left me with a scented pink note saying, "Sorry, yar, I got a TV serial. I can't come to shoot." And then in walks this, uh, you know, large lady from the street from me, from my community, and just to read for something else. And I looked at her and she started talking and I said, can you read for Shashi Aunty? And she was Shashi Aunty. That's yeah. Apni uh, yeah. um, Kamini Khanna. Kamini. She was absolutely marvelous. Amazing. And, and, and it's funny how the, how the blocks uh, how the blocks fall into place. And yeah. in Monsoon Wedding, yeah. the casting really yeah. had, had such a lot to do yeah. with Kulbushan, yeah. um, Lilette, of yeah. course, and Vijay Raz yeah, I mean, and, and, and the lovely Tilottama. Oh my goodness. Even the ones who were, you know, like Ira Pandey, who played oh, Tej's yeah, wife, yeah, yeah. you know, who just was so beautiful. And and then the casting of Rajat, our dear friend Rajat Kapoor as Tej. I mean, stroke. it was a master stroke, but out of desperation, actually, at the mm -hmm. end, because I had really was determined not to cast a villain in our movie mm. so that he would you know foreshadow the who he mm. the villainy but rather to cast the most elegant 
you know, mm. elderly patriarch who you least expect of any wrongdoing and who often is mm. the <laughs> very sophisticated uh, purveyor yeah. of it. And basically a good actor is what yeah. uh, what was the, the yeah. requirement there. Yeah. No, in Monsoon, we really created that sense of family. My mother catered every day, <laughs> and that was also very bi bi bonding uh, making. But also that we had this workshop with you leading us, remember? And that was the place that the Shashi aunties and the Ishans and the Dilotamas and everyone had a Blended, egoless yeah, sort of foundation. Yeah. By you sort of helping us to learn also concentration, what is honest, you know, what is acting and what is doesn't need to be said yeah, or done. Yeah. Because a lot of Bollywood and Bombay is about, you know, over the top, you you know, how you present yourself and how you underscore and underline every bloody emotion, you know. <laughs> so this was absolutely reversed to that. And, and we had to create this atmosphere and you were the great sort of founding father type well, who took us, actors, took us there. The actors can only be as good as the film. Yeah. <laughs> the it, was a, it was a great and very special experience, you know, because we were doing also so much in the shooting of Monsoon, so yeah. much so much uh, material every day. We would do like four scenes a day. And, and it's only when I came back to New York and saw the editing of it that I discovered the energy that was in every frame because all the actors Absolutely. were primed yeah. and they were just, right. everyone was one, basically. Absolutely. And Declan. Like, oh my God. Declan, Declan Quinn. Quinn, really. Salam, yeah. pranam, wherever you are, Declan, yeah. if you're watching this, you're, you're a god. Yeah. <laughs> because Declan's work contributed yeah. so much to it. Yeah. And he was he all was, there with us all the time. Yeah. And it's a handheld camera. Hand you all had to be alive yeah. all the minute yeah. and he had to be super yeah. alive Correct. to get that. Yes. And Ashwini would say, Declan, are you watching me yeah. when we're doing the yoga class? Yes. <laughs> and Declan would shirk. But Declan, yes. the yoga helped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, that was my first film mm. in which we brought the Iyengar Yoga yeah. teachings yeah. to the set every morning. And you, me and Declan yeah. and uh, Robin and uh, uh, um, Stephanie, we were the diehards. Yeah. I think the others, we did yoga we everywhere. Them along, yeah. didn't it? We did it in the kund, in the garden, in the bar, in, in, the, in my veranda sometimes. It was very... Uh, we never did. We never went without it. Now I've continued it ever, ever, ever since. On every every film. movie, yeah. Right. It's my one Hollywood perk. I demand non <laughs> non Hollywood. I should say. So uh, Nasir Bhai, tell us for the record. You know, where did it first begin? Did you always know you were going to be an actor? Yes, I I didn't know I'd be able to earn my living as an actor, but I knew that this is all I ever wanted to do. Mm -hmm. My my family was traumatized by it, of course, when I told them, which was much later, I never had the faith uh, in them that they would understand uh, that I, you know, to confide in them. My brothers, however, mm -hmm. supported me and oh, I, I could share it with them, both older than me, both big heroes in school. Mm -hmm. And I was the idiot uh, among the three of us. I was the, the guy who came last in class and all that sort of thing. Right. So it, it gave me great comfort to become other people. Mm -hmm. I was, I, I remember being dissatisfied with what I was, even when I was six and seven years old. Mm -hmm. And I just could not give a damn about what was being taught in class and all that. The only thing that interested me was the Shakespeare we read, mm -hmm. the films we saw mm -hmm. and the plays. That that we you performed. that we that we did. I never yeah. got a part in any. You never got a part. Never. I was a bad student. I was no good. Uh, it was the best students who always got yeah. the roles in plays. The teachers' pets. Yeah. And Mr. Kendall, Jeffrey Kendall, is oh. the man to whom I dedicate a lot of my work. I've been watching him since I was five years old on mm -hmm. stage. Every year he came to our school and performed. Mm -hmm. I still consider him the greatest actor I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. He uh, has a traveling Shakespeareana. Shakespeareana, it was called. And they, Shakespeare they used to travel around Asia yeah. and perform only in schools. They never did a show for the public with tickets. I've, I've, I've seen them. Yeah, And I finally Amazing. got the chance to, to meet him in Junoon. He mm -hmm. played a small part in Junoon. Uh -huh. And so I finally got to meet him and shake hands with him and sit wow. down and talk to him. And I, and I asked him, you know, I told him, of course, about the influence he'd had. And he, yeah. he got very embarrassed. And then I said, but I've got to ask you something. D do you ever have a sense of regret that you didn't stay on in England and become a, a yeah. knight and a lord and all that? Because you're better than any of these people. Yeah. 
Uh, of course, he, uh, of course not. I'm not that good. And then he said something which hit me hard. He said, I'm not an actor, I'm a missionary. And my mission is to spread Shakespeare. Mm-hmm. And suddenly his whole life, you know, yeah, I understood absolute beauty. What, where, where he's coming from and what he's at. Mm. They never had a home, they never had any money. The Kendalls, mm-hmm. through their lives, were itinerant players. Mm-hmm. And in Asia, in Asia, in Asian continent, yeah. where oftentimes Shakespeare yeah. was unknown. So Mr. Kendall is the man who I think has created much more of a awareness of theatre, not only of Shakespeare, of theatre mm. in India than any Indian has done. Mm. Anyway, Jeffrey Kendall was the influence. And we saw great movies in school. Mm-hmm. Like? Uh, we saw everything, you mm-hmm. know. We saw everything from Mickey Mouse to Orson Welles, you know. Wow. Yeah. I remember seeing Citizen Kane when I must have been 11 or 12, wow. not understanding it at all. I remember seeing On the Waterfront. I remember seeing the Paul Muni films, the Gary Cooper films, the John Wayne films, the Jerry Lewis films, wow. the Three Stooges, uh, everything. You know, whoever chose those movies really knew his onions and mm-hmm. loved movies. Mm-hmm. And so now when, when Ratna and I are watching some old television channel showing an old movie, there's the rare movie which I can't identify within, you know, like 15 seconds. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> James Cagney, Humphrey wow. Bogart, Van Johnson, Troy Donahue. I mean, <laughs> name it, Bobby Darren. I've seen all those movies. You know, b- oh. Because movies just blew my mind yeah. from that age and I just cannot have enough of movies. So I always watched any kind of movie that was around. Mm-hmm. And, and in the towns we lived, English movie, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock show. Sure. We had, I saw, you know, Dr. Dr. Zhivago forever <laughs> in Ravi Talkies, Bhuvaneshwar. <laughs> right. Yeah. And we even in Ajmer mm-hmm. had films like The Sweet Life. Wow. La Dolce Vita. Yeah. Coming to Prabhat Talkies in Ajmer for a Sunday morning show. That's amazing. Yeah. So I also saw that, you know. Wow. And I, yeah, and I saw, of course, the Gina Lola Brigida movies. Yes. And the Bridget Bardo movies. Yeah. And, yeah. Saw them all. I, and, and I encountered actors like Marcello Mastroianni and yeah. Yves Montan yeah. and Charles Lawton and Spencer Tracy and all at a very early age. And I felt, this is, these actors are not photographic mm. tricks after all. Because so far, one Brando and Cooper mm. and so on. And then when I saw Spencer Tracy mm. for the first time, I said, hey, that's the kind of actor I can become. Mm-hmm. He looks real. He smells of the earth. Mm-hmm. He played the old man in the sea mm-hmm. as this fisherman and his, the sweat on him looked real. His hands and feet looked gnarled and mm-hmm. when he pulled the fish in, you know, it all, he reminded me of my grandfather and I said, yeah, there, there's a SAV actor out there. Mm-hmm. So I always aspired mm-hmm. to be an actor of that kind. Mm-hmm. Uh, I knew very early that I didn't look like Gary Cooper. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, too bad for Gary Cooper. <laughs> so I didn't try to look like him. It was, you know, the, the mirror yeah. told me. Yeah. I was friends with the yeah. mirror from an yeah. early age. So I thought, and then I saw Spencer Tracy playing Bad Day at Black Rock. Mm-hmm. And then I saw him playing something else. And then I saw Charles Lawton playing The Hunchback. And then I saw him play Captain Bly. And I said, hey, this is what I can do. Yeah. I can, I can alter my appearance. So that's something I worked on yeah. consciously yeah. since I was 12 or 13 years old. Imagining how it would be with a moustache, yeah. how it would be with a beard, how I'd be without hair. Would I ever grow bald? What would happen to me when I grew? And all these kind of things. Yeah. Imaginary scenarios I played out in yeah. my head. And, and that, that, that made my childhood bearable, you know. So that's where it came from. And then when, when did you actualize it? When did you go, you go to National School of Drama? Or? Yeah, no, a little before that because as luck would have it, I, I failed in class mm. nine. Uh-huh. So my dad pulled me out of this school uh-huh. and said, I can't, you know, send you to this expensive school. No, yeah. I want to keep you under my wing. Yeah. So he pulled me and put me into a school in Ajmer uh-huh. called St. Anselm's, uh-huh. which was run by the Jesuit missionaries. Now. Uh-huh. And it was in St. Anselm's that I got three friends together and said, let's do a play and let's do The Merchant of Venice and I'll play Shylock. And I did a very good imitation of Mr. Kendall as Shylock. <laughs> and this friend, one friend played Antonio, one yeah. played Bassanio and one played Portia. Uh-huh. And we did these three scenes 
from Merchant of Venice and we told the whole school, hey guys, they're doing a play this evening, come and watch. Yeah. So everybody came. Yeah. <laughs> and I stepped on stage for the first time in my life. And I was 14, I think. Huh. With these years of, you know, desiring to do yeah. this behind me. Years, already 13 years, yeah. or 10 years. And I went on stage and I spoke something and everybody laughed. It, it was, I think, that was the turning point in my yeah. life, yeah. And I haven't looked back since, haven't had a second thought since. Yeah. Never have I questioned the decision to become an actor since that day. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I felt I was, I felt I was worth something. Mm -hmm. So, t you know, when you first went from theatre into the new cinema, the new wave, what it's called, which was not quite the new wave, but the more serious uh, cinema that reached also the people, how did that happen? Because that you were at the forefront of that kind of... If I had been cast as the third dead body at that time, I would have accepted mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I had no choice. I mm -hmm. would, I, it was either staff or mm -hmm. do anything that comes to you. Anything, yeah. I auditioned as a news reader. I got rejected. I tried to get work in ads, everything. Nothing was happening. And along came Mr. Sham Benegal from heaven. And I had been recommended to him by Girish Karnad. Yeah who also warned him that this is a very troublesome guy. Mm -hmm. He's uh, unpredictable and he, uh, you know, has bad habits and so on. But he's a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> so Sham had one look at me and told me, yeah, you, you're in. It as was... far as commercial movies were concerned, I didn't think I'd get anything. Yeah. And I never tried even. I never bothered because then Nishant happened and then Manthan happened and then Bhumika happened. Bang, 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 one after the other. Gave me enough money to survive. I mm -hmm. didn't need to go from, you know, to producers' offices and leave my photographs. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they started coming to me, mm -hmm. the popular filmmakers, the the Raj Shri productions, and so on. But uh, it was just luck. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hadn't determined to serve art mm -hmm. as an actor. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be known. I wanted mm -hmm. to be famous. I wanted to be rich. Mm -hmm. But uh, now I, you have most of the I got all that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I also, I think I'm managing to serve a, a, an important function. Yeah. I don't regret that uh, I don't uh, get offered uh, the big Hollywood movies to star in. I've, I've, my curiosity about that has also been satisfied yes. by one experience, and yes. that's enough. <laughs> and I feel that I wasn't born in India by accident. Mm -hmm. Why should I hanker? to go to England and mm -hmm. work in the theatre or go to Hollywood and work in the movies mm -hmm. there. There's a job to do back home. Mm -hmm. And it's and I think and it it's, reaches it's, millions. it's a significant job and it reaches millions. Millions. Mm -hmm. And you're, you'll, you've given us a real... Uh, you're the compass for a lot of the... You know, how one can perform and how one can uh, be in a film as oneself. You know, the being is what you taught us in a Monsoon Wedding. You know, just how to be. Remember all those, all <laughs> those lessons to everyone who'd come on there and try really hard. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, pretend you're waiting, and they really try <laughs> yeah. so hard to say that they're waiting yeah. instead of just wait. <laughs> just, just being. But uh, yeah, it's true. And but it's been almost ten years since Monsoon Wedding. Yeah. Yeah. The only difference is my hair has gone black again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the future. <laughs> Back to the future. And uh, it is funny that you know, one day Ratna and I were talking about it. He, and I was saying, yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to turn 60 this year. It's, you know, hell, is this sunset time approaching? And life seems to have gone by like that. Yeah. And so she said, but isn't it wonderful that life has gone by like that? Yeah. That we can look back and say, hey, when did all this happen? Yeah. Instead of sitting here and saying, why doesn't this... And why this, didn't you know, I do that? Yeah, and, and I didn't... And yeah. Or this time is not cut, why not? I know. I mean, that would be the worst fate. I know. That, I know. that could know. befall us. It's, it's funny how the movies that I remember as being the landmarks for me mm -hmm. and my growth mm -hmm. have been the ones which have required the least effort. Mm -hmm. Or at least one wasn't aware of the effort. Yeah. But I don't remember working, slogging on my no. part or trying to understand yeah. it or anything yeah. in Monsoon Wedding. Yeah. You know? Whereas in many other movies, yeah. I remember doing going through this grind yeah. and, and ending up with results which were not so good. Yeah. So, you know, I guess there is, there is a lot of truth in what 
uh, uh, the Mr. Grotowski used to say that there is no such thing as talent, but there is such a thing as lack of talent. Mm -hmm. And lack of talent occurs when you're not in your right place. Mm. And to watch my work in a film like Monsoon Wedding or Masoom, and to watch it in a film like one of the nameless many mm -hmm. that I've done, which even you haven't seen, <laughs> you know, you wouldn't believe it's the same actor. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, we are, we are very rich for that. And we also, a person like you really gives us a lot of richness. It's like you always go back to something that is pure, you know, whether it's in theater or in movies. I just know that uh, any Hindi movies, whatever they are, I mean, if you're in them, for me, I go because it's a barometer of something that is aspired for that is truthful, you know, and of course, skillful and all of that. But there's a truth. I'm so grateful that I can do this work mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and which is why I feel I uh, I owe it mm -hmm, so much. You know, mm -hmm, it's not enough mm -hmm. to just live mm -hmm, a good life and mm -hmm. you know, get your picture in the papers. Mm -hmm. I, I owe it something and, and I guess that explains uh, whatever I, I, I try to do.